You're listening to Inside Air, a behind the wire view of the Royal Air Force, its people, technology, and operations. Hi, I'm Flight Lieutenant Chris Sully, and welcome to the latest RAF Inside Air podcast. In this episode, we're at RAF Coningsby to check out an initiative to get us all in a better place physically, mentally, and emotionally. It's a holistic approach, and if it's not just about the physical ability of a person, it's everything. So if you look at what force development and adventurous training can deliver, that provides a safe environment for people to push themselves so they know how they will cope under stress. I think any form of movement, and that's what's important about moving, eating, thinking, sleeping better, we have to move better, but more importantly, we're just out moving, and that's good, isn't it? We're just away from the office, just changing the environment, getting some natural sunlight in, which is, you know, which is important for our circadian rhythm. What this allows us to do is do the stuff that we need to do. So that movement bit, it allows us to do the education. So when sorties are up and we've got an, you know, an amount of time when guys are on the floor and they can get through things, the PTIs can get straight onto squadron. They've been working closely with the squadron warrant officers. As usual, we'll also reheat a few stories which may have slipped under your radar and we'll be finding out who is under the hat this week. Best location you've served? I have Ecuador because I like sun and it's always sunny in Cyprus. And what's your proudest moment in the RAF? Being notified about my MBE award in this year's King's Birthday's Honours List. Even small changes to how we lead our lives can make a huge difference to how we feel in our personal lives and how we perform in our roles within the RAF. Beep tests, sit-ups and push-up beastings by an RAF PTI might have been the way things have always been done, but now we're being encouraged to move, eat, think and sleep better in a tailored approach to help us individually, physically, mentally and emotionally. Squadron leader Daz Scales joined the PTIs and training development flight team at RAF Coningsby to see what it all means. It's no secret the Royal Air Force, like all the UK's military services, must maintain a high state of readiness to ensure its capability to remain agile, adaptable and deliver air power when and wherever it is needed. Fitness has always been part of that mantra, to ensure our aviators, whatever trade or role, are able to deliver their best for as long as it takes. Loosely translated, that often means regular activity, circuits, sports and adventurous training. For some, and perhaps as time wears on, we get a little older, perhaps more comfortable. Whilst we are still delivering what is needed, is it time to ask, could we do better? Are we living well? And perhaps some of us shouldn't be fearing the annual RAF fitness test. Well, things are changing. Led by the RAF's training branch and physical training instructors, personnel at RAF Coningsby are championing a new approach to fitness, health and overall well-being not just to ensure we continue to maintain our operational edge, but also perhaps to live a little better too. I was invited to RAF Coningsby to meet Squadron Leader Lee, Flight Lieutenant Corrigan and Sergeant Rooney to find out more. Squadron Leader Lee at Coningsby, I am OC Force Development Squadron. So under me sit the PTIs, the Training Development Flight, the learning forces flights so the civilians that look after resettlement, etc. The role of me and my team is to prepare people to be ready to do whatever it is that's required of them. So to be in the mental state to phys- mentally and physically cope with whatever their job might put them into. So um, I've been I've been in the Air Force many many years, uh, both as a regular and reserve, and I, I have a I would say a, a colourful history of physical training. Um, in the RAF um, and things have changed even during my time but they're changing again aren't they so so what's what's the new training strategy what why are we here today what, what do you want to tell me about so I guess from what you said about your experience we want to get over that that white coat fear it's PTIs are not there to beast you they are there to help you and I think that's the key thing so in terms of the RAF fitness strategy is probably what was in place when you were in as a regular. Yeah, the RAF fitness strategy, yeah, I remember that. So yeah. the, the bleep test, the press-ups, the sit-ups, what we're moving towards. So we're looking at 
being able to have people move, eat, think and sleep better. And if we can do that across the mass population, so the whole force, to make sure that they understand that. And then when we're looking at the more high performance end, so the high pressure jobs, the engineers, the pilots, that's where we maybe need to go into a little bit more detail. This is quite a, a shift, isn't it? I, I, you say, so it's move, sleep. Move, eat, eat, think and sleep. Move, eat, think and sleep. And that's something that everybody can, th- everybody can, everybody does those things anyway. Yeah, I've got one of these like um, on my wrist. Uh, I don't have one of those smart watches, but I do have one of these sort of fitness tracker devices. Yep. And it talks about about my sleep. So that's obviously a, a big thing. Then. A key thing. If you don't, ha- if you're not able to recover properly and you're not getting restful sleep, are you ever? in a place to perform at your best. I, yeah, that is really important, isn't it? Because I suppose it's easy to think about, um, it's easy to think about the pilot. The pilot has to sit, and the air crew, um, because, and even the engineers, the, you know, they have to get it right because the consequence of, as you say, leaving literally a spanner in the works or forgetting to put something back or not tightening or being, just not being quite 100%, the result can be significant. But I suppose that actually extends beyond just the front line, but all the supporting areas as well, because everybody's contributing. Everybody's involved and it's, it's, a, it's not just the pointy edge, the pilot in that, in that cockpit. There's um, a comparison about the Air Force to a Formula One team that yes, that pilot or that driver is the person who is delivering the operational effectiveness or winning the race, but it's the whole team of people behind them. So yes, it's the engineers, but it's also the caterers, it's the PTIs, it's the regiment flight, it's MT, it's everybody. And I think that's what, at Coningsby, it's the whole station is focused on one output. So this is quite a a, a positive shift uh, from just going into the gym and being fit is great but a lot of people I mean you have uh, certainly when I was in the Royal Air Force um, as a regular you might have circuits at lunch times perhaps one in the uh, after work in the in um, but a station of say I don't know two and a half thousand people uh, a typical strength perhaps um, you're not getting two and a half thousand people doing circuits every day so obviously we need a different type of mindset in terms of how people um, could engage in in these areas in their in their diet in their their, their rest their, their their thinking and their and their activity. So, what does your strategy do to try and introduce that to people? How what's the way forward? Do you think? So at Coningsby, we're looking at innovative ways that we can provide the opportunity for everybody to move, eat, think, and sleep. So through Astra, we've managed to get. Um, two electric bikes that can carry 500 kilograms of weight, which means we can take the circuit or the fitness session to the squadrons, the other side of the airfield. That's called Project Delapsus. And that's a, an initiative that the, the team have come up with to provide more opportunity. So it's not just in the gym doing circuits, and it's not just about beasting in the circuits. It's about better movement, more functional movement, and making sure that they understand that not only do they need to do the movement, but they also need to recover as well. I think it's interesting. I remember the term beasting, and that's something that back in the 90s when I started training, it was it seemed to be the case, and it, and it was everywhere. You know, it wasn't just you know just the air force and stuff. That you you came into the gym and you were in your blues, and it was like get changed into your greens right now, get back into your blues now, give me 20. It sounds like some great sort of movie or something you might see. It, it really seems that the air force has moved miles ahead now and really thinking beyond just the physical like you say it's that that mental health and that ability to think and think and, and rest and that is that that's what your strategy is, is is doing i'd say it's exactly that it's a holistic approach and if it's not just about the physical ability of a person it's everything so if we look at what force development and adventurous training can deliver that provides a safe environment for people to push themselves so they know how they will cope under stress. And I suppose there is a, a recognition, um, for example, you have the, the, the fighter pilot who has to be able to endure. They have to be able to fly uh, at it quite intensely, uh, undertaking in, intense G-force, intense pressure, you know, uh, in, intellectual pressure um, with consequences, obviously. So um, you have that, that level. But then you have, for example, perhaps um, uh, a, a supplier um, uh, working in, in, in logistics, who's making sure the equipment is supplied, not quite as dynamic. Um, they don't need to have the same level of fitness or may not have the same level of fitness. So, so where would they, what would we be doing to encourage them to, to train or how would that work, you think? So I think it's, it's the whole population that we need to be focused on. 
I wouldn't say that that supplier needs to be less fit than that that pilot. I think everybody should be at a certain level, and it might be they're in a less pressured, a less high pressure situation or high stress situation, but they still need to be capable of doing their job. So if they're not recovered, they might not be thinking properly, and errors are made. I think that's a really good point. And you talk about fitness, because one thing I recall back in the day during my initial after training was the way you measure fitness is the ability to recover from something. Is that still the case, or has that shifted? I'd say that's probably the way that the profession is trying to move towards. Yeah. It's people understanding what physical pressures can put on you, and the physical and mental are so inter intertwined, and recovery is so key to that. So I suppose, I think some people might be thinking, um, certainly I used to think that uh, you know, the Royal RF Regiment, for example, you know, pretty strong uh, individuals, have to carry a lot of kit, do a lot of um, uh, moving on the ground, et cetera, defending stations, defending assets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we have a level of fitness that we have to do as well. But we, we're not suggesting that everybody has to be as strong or as fast or as able as a fast jet pilot or as a, as a, as a, as a, as a regiment gunner, for example. It's a case of within your own sort of capacity, isn't it, I suppose, that your, your fitness, your ability to do your job at your pace, but recover so that you can keep doing it. Is that right? Everybody needs to have functional fitness, I guess, is the, the simplest way to describe it. You might not be required to do such high stress levels as other professions. However, if you're not fit to undertake daily activities and recover pro properly, then you may be not in the right mental state to do anything. That's really useful to know because it, it, it's about being uh, fit within your own capability of your age, your, your size, and obviously eating well, um, not eating too much, not drinking too much, not smoking too much, all the good things that we hear about all of the time, uh, everything in, in moderation. But at the same time, we're not suggesting, from, I think what you're saying, it's not about necessarily being able to do that to get a, a really high beep test score. It, it's about being fit within your own scope to be, with the ability to do your job um, as as, as long as you need, it needs to be done with your ability to, to recover. Is that yeah, and I think the, the other side that we've probably not touched upon is the, is the thinking side, that actually, yes, you need to be physically fit, and yes, you need to eat, eat well to, to be able to be physically fit, and you need to recover, so the sleep's important, and a lot of people don't necessarily understand the impact of what poor sleep can do to your physical and mental ability, um, but it's the thinking side, and that's where we're trying to upskill the trade so they are capable of doing doing that, coaching individuals to make sure that they're in the right mindset because mental health is such a big thing and it's much more talked about than it used to be. Yeah, mental health is um, uh, a really big thing. You know, we know things get tough, we know things get difficult uh, and fear is real. It's, I guess it's about how we deal with that. It's not about necessarily getting rid of it but being able to cope with it, is that the case? Definitely being able to cope with it and that's where when you see Sergeant Rooney later, um, he will go through some of that and that's where adventurous training can really help. Doing my best to politely ignore Squadron Leader Lee's invitation to experience some psychological testing courtesy of Sergeant Rooney, I was joined by Flight Lieutenant Corrigan on a wellness walk to talk in a bit more detail about the what's and why's of the new strategy. What did it all mean to us? What should we all be doing and why? So we're taking a walk now outside, um, kind of perhaps a wellness walk or something. I suppose um, even when time's tough, just to uh, get out and do some exercise, just to walk around stations uh, is a good idea. Without doubt, I think any form of movement, and that's what's important about moving, eating, thinking, sleeping better. We have to move better. Um, so yes, a wellness walk by any stretch, and, and obviously uh, our walks with, with our PED department, with Sergeant Rooney, work well. Um, but more importantly, we're just out moving, and that's good, isn't it? We're just away from the office, just changing the environment, getting some natural sunlight in, which is, you know, which is important for our circadian rhythm. So things are changing in the in the, uh, the world of fitness in the RAF. All those uh, eat eat well, sleep well, train well. What was the other one? Uh, so move, eat, think, and sleep better. So if you think Met's really simple for somebody like me, you know that's what we're trying to do. Can we just move better from what we do? So if you're sat in an office today and and we're all slaves to it and we understand where we're up to but can we just go out and move just small small little habitual changes week on week and that's going to get us into a more 
in our view into a much better place to be more available for deployments and our, our kind of role within you know within flying to fight i think our piece of the puzzle is getting people fit fit to fly okay and uh, tell us a bit about your your background because um you didn't just leave school and join the air force like many of us etc um you you did something quite different so what, what do you bring to the party it's quite interesting yeah so initially i actually joined the royal navy as an officer um but i was lucky because of my my sport which is rugby union um so as a university cadet um during that time i was identified because of my uh, ability and some would say inability to play rugby but um you know had a really successful and enjoyable time working both within playing and coaching and as administrator in sport so that culminated with three positions in national governing bodies and then was very fortunate to work in the british olympic association during the london 2012 olympiad in in the athlete uh, athlete engagement world so looking at kind of marginal gains um and bringing that into a more systemic approach um worked as a consultant commercial coach around talent identification to talent development um and i rejoined defense um in 2018 so thinking about um that that history all the all those activities all all those professional bodies you were part of and and the changes in in, in the air force what how do you think that the RAF perhaps is now comparing to what's going out in the civilian world what, what do you think the air force is bringing in and perhaps um using its own expertise to sort of mash together i think we're probably at a place now where we're embracing people like myself who've brought some of that industry experience back and we're also looking at that full fusion model I think we've got a great opportunity because we've seen a couple of examples with the pilot projects with Project Human Performance and then some of the work that Wing Commander Whiting's done over at Robson Academy of Resilience we're now in a place to to put this into policy um, so what's the opportunity the Air Force has got I think it's got the opportunity um, probably one thing that people would say is in our 105 year heritage that we've embraced change and technology quicker than perhaps our sister services so I think that's the opportunity right now is we've got to think different to be better and that's part of our our program of understanding ourselves better and everything that links with that so we have stakeholders like tether academy of leadership or different areas or um you know looking into the um, lead project within that i think we've got a real live example of that with a cadre of 421 training specialists in the physical training instructor branch and then our people like myself who are commission training specialists to grab hold of the opportunity and really drive the air force into that role of being you know fit to fly but what that looks like for the learner is different on our travels around the station we met with sam one of raf coningsby's physical training instructors who was out and about on a rather strange looking e-bicycle well tricycle if we're being pedantic of course i had to have a go okay so um i'm i'm sat on some electronic bike contraption so what's this all about nick uh, so this is an astro funded project called project delapsus um the bike that you've got is uh delivered uh for us with our with our industry partner iCycle limited this is pushing 500 kilos of equipment goes up to 15 miles an hour and the corporal ptis and even sergeant ptis can ride this up onto the squadron so the other side of the airfield and to deliver circuits and fizz broga whatever's right for our service people whether that's 20 minutes whether that's an hour that's something that the astro project's made available what this allows us to do is do the stuff that we need to do so that movement bit it allows us to do the education so when sorties are up and we've got an, you know, an amount of time when guys are on the floor and they can get through things the ptis can get straight onto squadron they've been working closely with the squadron warrant officers to go in and deliver this type of so, fizz so for basically them. when you can't get to the gym the gym will come to you. We need to take, remove the barriers to physical activity. Yeah. So it's about our inactive population moving to semi-active and semi-active moving to active. So the idea of this is, is more introduction, getting people through. We've got a gym here that can only have 35 people on the shop floor right. when we're delivering our lunchtime circuits. Yeah. So that's not a huge percentage of 2,500 people. No. But what we can do is the guys can take these up for the day to go and deliver, to be able to do some delivery. They can also concurrently get into the T-bars, deliver the sleep workshops, which which we've done with the National Sleep Council, which is some yep. of the products that we've developed. Yep. And we're also now starting to look at some of the coaching workshops that uh, I deliver along with the squadron leader around how people are coaching each other and supporting each other. So what Astra, the, the funding stream of Astra has given us for this three and Astra sprint is pretty straightforward. It's given us a, quite literally a vehicle to go there, but to start conversations. Yep. Amazing. So I'm, gonna, I'm now going to take the role of a 
PTI on a bike, <laughs> you are, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to release the handbrake. Pull it in and press so down. Pull that in there. That's yeah. now off. Good. And you just ride around the circuit there. So I'm just um, going to go. I'm going to. Oh, yeah. Just manage yourself now. around. Yeah, and off you so, go there. All right, it's. Uh, Oh, okay, so oh, it's not too bad. Oh, it's oh, you can feel the power. It's power assisted, so I feel a bit like. So quick right turn there. I feel like bit, I was going to say Mary Poppins, but I don't think she actually <laughs> rides a bike, does she? But I feel like um, so basically, I've got the ultimate shopping basket in front of me on this electric bike. This shopping basket in front of me must be about a meter across and a meter and a half uh, deep, and inside this massive box on the front of this bike. Uh, is 500 kilos of, of weight. So do you think, well, why would you want that? Well, these are, these are dumbbells. That's what these weights are. They're dumbbells. So it's a bit like an ice cream van for fitness, I guess. Um, there isn't... Uh, oh, there is a bell. Here you go. How cool is that? But what, a, what an innovative idea. You can just go to the squadron, go to HR, go to supply, and say, come on, let's do some circuits. So what we wanted to do as a fly is that... Um, we're quite passionate that our corporal PTIs are the, are the coaches. Yeah. They're the people that we've got to act as the advocates or the apostles of physical activity. So Sam is a corporal PTI here. He has the responsibility, back to me as his flight commander, to go out and promote Fizz. He's got mission command, and that's really important for us. He's got to keep his squadron fit. He's got to keep them engaged in FD and AT. He's got to get the sports clubs involved in that. So, so Sam, um, what, you, you take these, you, you, you do circuits on this, so can you tell me what sort of stuff they might be doing with this? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the sky's the limit, really, with a kit. Um, it's basically as creative as you want to be. Um, so I'm, I have 29 squadron personally, so I'll go over there, uh, I'll wander in, yep. all in the tea bar yep. sipping away or snacking on crisps, and I'll just say, right, at some point today, who wants a session if you've got a bit of time? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a lot easier. You get a lot more buy-in. If you're there when they're on their lunch break going, come on then, let's yeah, go yeah, and train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot easier to get some, some response. So. So, so what sort of stuff? You've got these dumbbells in here. Yeah, so, so as you can see on the board, so this one I've got written on there for my last session. Oh, yeah, uh, got, yeah. Mobile to batter challenge. Oh, you've got like cupboard stuff on the side. Yeah, we've got a portable speaker that lives oh, in there. Oh, that's very cool. So we yeah, can yeah. supply the tunes for motivation. Oh, wow, speed we'll ladders. Speed ladder. All sorts. Yeah, so basically it's however creative the PTI, whoever's on the what, session, be? can yeah, be. Yeah. Um, the other nice thing is you can go up to the squadron and say what what sort of style session do you want? Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's a, a bit of flexibility which is nice. Oh, what amazing piece of kit! You say when the if you can't get to the gym or I wouldn't say the gym is closed, it's probably twenty four seven. But if you can't get there um, or you've got a nice field, you want to do something outside, something you know that's that, that's good for everybody, um, give you a call. Let's do some fizz, have some fun, and then you go off and then exactly. and help them out. It saves you getting in a diesel tranny van full of kit. Yeah, you know, burning good up for the fuel. environment. Exactly. An electric bike as well, so uh, everybody wins. Leaving Sam to return to his duties, I was interested to know just how this new strategy was going to work. With so many trades, people, ages and backgrounds, what was going to be the approach? Still on my wellness walk, I posed these thoughts to Flight Lieutenant Corrigan. This all sounds really, really great and a, and a wonderful change and, and something hopefully everybody in the Royal Air Force is, is going to embrace. But let's, let's be a bit more specific perhaps. So say for example I was working in the Human Resources uh, uh, Department in, in the RAF, the, the PSF, Personal Services Flight as it used to be called. Um, you know, I like my TV, I like my crisps and a lot of the time I'm just at the, at the desk doing my part, an important part but it's pretty static. I'm not running around too much and, and now of course we're hearing all this good stuff that we should be doing um what, what 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 do i need to do if i came down to the physical education department and uh said look can you can you help me out here what do i need to be doing am i, I could get beasted every day what, what, what's the plan do you think i think the first plan is is that yes by all means come down to the piad flight the, the first step is for us as a as a trade and w within the branch and trade and profession that we now are is to to be out there a bit more and be a bit more obvious so let's take that example is you're as important as anybody else so um appreciate yeah we all like the tv we all like crisps that type of thing that comes with it so i'd be really keen to understand what's your sleep been like and that's just pen and paper monitoring um, you know over the last uh, you know four to five weeks I'd be looking at that let's really monitor that let's look at the time um, when you're living in a, and let's say you're that that aviator colleague that lives in you know lives in during the week or even all all, all the time let's understand your environment for your sleep hygiene then let's start to look at your food 
um, in terms of what's available for you and how best you can maybe make those little big wins and changes. Um, can we look towards that and then get you moving, which is the most important thing, moving safely and appropriately. You know, bones before muscles. So what we need to do then is encourage and be at the place where from my perspective you're working with what's the right level for you so that's our traditional you know station circuits offering but we've changed that here at Coningsby we've made that more appropriate to movement more empirical based more own body weight based rather than just getting big for the sake of getting big you know what's right for you and then also starting to look at things around role specific trades so what's right for you in the HR centre is different for one of our uh, fast jet pilots and equally for our colleagues in the engineering line so again I I come back to that whilst movement is the first thing we do and we all do that every day and, and probably I listen quite intensely to some of the work of the late Sir Ken Robinson about how arrogant potentially we've become that we just see the body as moving and transporting our brain around we don't necessarily look towards that body being our piece of equipment our thing to really release that volition and power so yes the brain massively important that's why we've got thinking there but moving eating and sleeping actually supports that brain and how much time I'd probably challenge back to you as that colleague in the you know in the HR center there do you actually spend doing that but those are small occupational health changes that we can make seat position hip position how you drive a car do you just go back to your room and just lie down and eat crisps in a poor position so this is those big little wins and that's the important bit for me that we've got to get over so when you come in we've got to be act as a coach so the silent c in the physical training instructor is a coach in front of us is yes a colleague yes somebody that's the same as us but actually more importantly somebody that's available for a commander to go and do stuff so if i take and the, and the guys in the hr center is a real good example of oh, what does it mean to me what it means to you is you're, you're really important because you get people out onto the operational line quicker than anybody you support us with that administration so i need you available i need you available to be able to go out the door just as much as i do a fast jet pilot and this is really really interesting i mean it's i guess it's um sort of the key takeaways i sort of uh got from that was um sort of uh small changes um so it's not you said everybody's different so it's not about you know, everybody isn't going to go into the gym suddenly and start lifting hundreds of kilos of weight or or running um shuttle runs for for 50 minutes etc i guess it's about understanding your own your own body understanding your role what you like and making the small changes um in in lots of different areas like you say so in rest in, in diet in activity um and not assuming that you have to be this sort of like arnold schwarzenegger or um uh, some super athlete or something i think that's too easy to look at that in terms of we're just trying to make you know twenty-seven thousand people the same that's not what we're trying to do what we're trying to do is to support your physiological and psychological underpinnings dr kate ludlam who's working with us at the human performance symposium from gb boxing talks about super strengths now if we don't work and refine on those strengths but also don't improve the foundation and we know from the long-term athletic development model that we've put into project human performance which is loosely based on Esteban Barley's work around how we move and how we eat think and sleep we're not going to be able to be in a place where we can release properly the human potential that we've got and I think probably is a very simple straightforward viewpoint from my perspective 105 years ago our airframe was the was the weakness we are such as an important engineering technologically driven organization now i'm not saying that we're the weakness now as humans what i'm saying is is perhaps we've got to look at that and look at that harder now that we've got to keep up with the amount of technology and investment that we've put into our into our airframe capability actually now into our people capability to really release the power of that engineering so fundamentally it's about us being fit to fight fit to fit to, to work fit to um, contribute uh, and sustain that fitness depending on what the the task is and I suppose what we're talking about particularly for example like say HR at RAF Coningsby or or any other station is in some ways is quite similar to perhaps to civilian life I mean there are plenty of people uh, on the outside of the wire who were probably also interested in trying to sort their lives out get a little bit fitter feel a bit more comfortable feel a bit more alert get more out of life and, and eat well so it's not just something that's perhaps specific to the service although vital to the service i agree and i think if we look at what colleagues in our uk stratcom in you know defense primary Healthcare look after we know we've got those nhs markers those indicators only recently did we have a dial down from 10,000 to 5,000 steps i don't know how many of our aviators do that every morning or day or even over the course of the week how many steps do you do 
how many people if i'm you know six foot five i'm 124 kilos yes i happen to come from an athletic background but i know that i have to keep my waist under 102 centimeters 94 centimeters to join up to reduce the risk of heart uh, you know a heart attack so this is about more people available for commanders to make more decisions because let's be honest we have to be in a complex world more available we have to be more adaptile and agile if we can in inverted commas admin ourselves in this fundamental four key areas we're going to be able to produce more we're going to be able to deliver more in a very very challenging and complex world so if i was to say say you're at home now and you're talking to um your gran or your mum um or your friends in the pub or something like that and they're saying oh mate yeah this is all really good but you know if, if you could offer me just one thing if there's one thing i had to do or if there's one thing you you would say look just just do that if, if you just did this that would that's that would get you on your way or what what would be like a single kind of sum up message if someone's someone like someone like me you know who could do with perhaps losing a few pounds um perhaps being a little bit more agile what would you say to me look that look Daz, if you could just do this just just go just try this or something like that what would you say do you think so lieutenant commander chris monk passed away in 2016 he was the man that brought the commando values to the royal marines huge mentor and figure within my life so i will uh, i will reference chris just do the next two things well Daz. you know go to bed tonight change something detox from your phone an hour beforehand make sure the room's cool there's one two let's stop drinking coffee at 12 o'clock today because you're going to feel that coffee at 12 o'clock tonight because of the effects that we know let's do that for this week so it's the, that's what i mean by small big wings there's a lot of things to think about there's a lot of things um that we could be doing that we should be doing there's a lot of things that we're sort of recognizing the the changes that um that we ought to try and make as individuals and as a service and as a as a species i suppose in terms of you know how we how we move forwards um but i guess that the message might be is if you can just do one thing today just do one and then perhaps see what you can do tomorrow yeah, and I think the thing that you're doing today is make that habit for tomorrow. It becomes part of your normal, let, let's put it into defence language, your normal standard operating procedures. That's amazing. No, I really appreciate that. And uh, a nice little walk today as well. So we've probably done about perhaps, well, it feels like we've done about 5,000 steps. I guess it's probably more about 500, but I guess every little helps. Everything does. And I think we all have a role to play in this. So a good day at RAF Coningsby, showcasing the changes in the way the RAF is looking at our health and well-being. But there was one more activity for me to complete. Squadron Leader Lee had kindly arranged a little adventurous training activity for me to experience. Leading me to a more remote area of RAF Coningsby's vast estate, I was met by adventurous training instructor, Sergeant Rooney. What are we doing today? What am I doing today? What are you doing today? Yeah, what am I doing today? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to give you an experience, a taster experience as you would, uh, which is the sort of thing that we take all of our uh, service personnel through. Okay. Um, and it's uh, to do with adventures training, even though it's, it's slightly branched off high ropes. Okay. Um, high ropes is actually classified as a force development activity class because it gives you an experience okay. to be out on a limb and then have to make a decision. Uh, and have to act when you're up against it. Um, it looks there's a perception high. of yeah. Uh, of yeah, yeah of danger, but I can okay. I, I can promise you it's 100% safe. All right. So basically, you're going to get me to climb up some very tall poles. Nope. I'm um, not going to get you to do anything. This oh, okay. Is challenged by choice this morning. Challenged by choice. This is what we do. Wow. Okay. In today's modern air force. I feel challenged. All right. Okay. So uh, it is going to be completely down to you. Right. So I'm going to coach you through okay. this process, but it's down to you to see how far you want to push so that, yourself. That's a difference already, isn't it? Yeah. Because uh, exactly, again, from the last time I did this, was, which was many years ago, somewhere in, in, in Wales, yeah. um, on a high ropes, and it was like, go there, do this, do that, do this. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you were tall, small, large, whatever, scared or not, you just had to do as you were told. And what yeah. you're telling me today is actually, no, you get to decide. 100%. You have to figure it out. You take the challenge yeah. and do what you can. So today's well, modern air force, I suppose. I mean, I've, I've been in 23 years now. So when I was going through training, it was very, very similar where it was a case of get there, do this, do that. Yeah. Don't ask any questions, just get it done. We realized quite quickly that that wasn't really producing the, the, the best outcome that we wanted. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to grow people uh, and we're going to give them the, those opportunities so they can approach it but we also need to be very, very cognizant of today's geopolitics and everything that's going on. We also need to push them as well. Yes. But what we're looking for, it's all about intrinsic motivation, as opposed to when we were giving them extrinsic motivation and we were just shouting and bawling, yeah. you're not going to get the right outcome. So okay. what we want is we want somebody to actually understand the process and then to develop themselves 
being coached and guided by us. All right. Does that kind of make sense? That does make sense. Good. I'm still scared, but I'm, yeah. I'm very <laughs> happy. About it. No, scared, <laughs> being scared is a good thing, because that's it's a, it's, a, it's a natural trait, because okay. inside your little voice in your head, your self-preservation mode is going, what am I doing, what am I doing? Yeah. And I can promise you it's going to get louder the right. higher you climb. Okay. But what I will say to you, and this is the one big thing, is it's the same outcome. Okay. So the higher up you go is the more you challenge yourself. All right. So I'll go through the actual activity when we get over there yep. and, and what you've actually got to do. But are you ready for this? Yes, I right, think I'm so ready. Do a final safety check. Yep. Just make sure you're okay. Does that harness feel safe? It feels safe. I feel like right, I'm so strapped I've got in. my harness on as well. And we both got um, helmets on as Hard well. Hard hat's good to go. Okay. Good to go. All right, let's do it. Let's do this. Right, so we're coming over to the to the high ropes course now. Um, I'm going to try and explain this as best as possible. It's a, a wooden frame. Uh, the very high point is about 60 foot off the ground. Okay. What we're going to get you to do today is climb up something called a totem pole. All right. So it's called a totem pole leap of faith. All right, so okay. it kind of does what it says on the tin, really. Sounds like jumping. Yeah, the structure is right in front of you. Uh, we've got a, um, a totem pole with loads of wooden chocks. So that's what you're actually going to use to climb up. Um, you're going to go vertically up straight away. Before that, obviously, I'm going to attach you to the rope and get you into the system, and then we're going to have a little bit of a chat before we go. Okay. Just to make sure that you're safe, I'm safe. I'm going to set the parameters for you, and then it's up to you to then push yourself and see how far you want to go. And we'll talk as we're going up anyway. But when you get to the top, um, you'll see that there's a little platform. Yeah. It's no more than probably, what do you reckon? Oh, I'd say what, 60, 70 centimetres. Two, two feet by two feet? Yeah, probably that. about that. If we're, go, if we're going in the, in, in the feet in, in, yeah. in, instead of the, uh, the, the metric system. Yeah, yeah. About, about 60 by 60? About 60 by 60 centimetres. Right. So it's yeah. enough for you to basically try and get your, your, your sort of body on yeah, but, there. But it, it, it kind of sticks out at the top. So it does, yeah. it does. Yeah, that's, that's... that's going to be the challenge. So, that, so there are challenges as you go up there. Yeah. So obviously when you start to climb, yeah. you're going to have that little voice inside your head and it's going to be like, what am I doing? What am I doing? The higher up you go, that's going to get louder. The key thing is for you to train and say I'm all right yeah. I'm all right why am I okay so what questions are going to be going through your mind right what am I doing yeah. why am I doing this yeah what this this podcast is taking a, a, a pound of flesh out of me yeah I'm really earning my money today yeah you are you are yeah. but um you've now got to tell yourself um okay so my training's kicking in yeah. I'm okay I'm being taught uh, <clears throat> I have confidence in the equipment confidence in the instructor and most importantly you've got confidence in yourself okay that's the key thing all right we happy with that Right, yep, yep, we'll yep. Now. I can see exactly what he's going to make me do. It looks terrifying. <laughs> that I can, I'm going to have to climb up this pole, which has already looks difficult enough. And then I've got to get onto a top of a platform that is actually over, like it's like a lip. So it's not like you just get on and just carry on. I've actually got to go, almost go, not upside down, but it's going to feel like that. And then what, what I can tell here, it looks like I'm going to have to jump onto something. Oh my word, that's... See, I did a bungee jump, but I was technically attached to something then, and it wasn't well, quite so You're technically difficult. attached to this as well, yeah, so you'll well, be absolutely fine. If you've done a bungee jump, you'll have no issues with this yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, okay. You're going to get to uh, where the, you'll see there's a trapeze at the very top. Yeah. And then the rope's attached to you from the second pulley going into the back of your harness. Okay. So no matter where you are, it, you're completely safe. It's the same outcome. I've got you attached to the to the belay uh, device and obviously to the anchor on, on the ground. All right. And then I'll just lower you down once you're doing it. Are you ready for the challenge? Okay. I'm ready for the challenge. Let's so do the challenge this. challenge is we're going to start climbing up the totem pole. Okay. All right. Uh, when we get to the top, you use the wooden chocks, obviously, as your climbing aid. You're going to get to the top. You're going to have to then maneuver outwards and get onto the platform which is about 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters yeah it's going to wobble all right i'm not going to lie to you it's okay. going to wobble right? but that adds to the effect and adds mm. to the uh, i like to say enjoyment yes it's, yeah it's the, the, let's say the, the the experience yeah okay when you get to the top then all i want you to do is i want you to stand up right yeah compose yourself ask how you're feeling sounds good happy with that happy right okay climb when ready all right climbing now so starting my my ascent. Now the first part is just, I guess, is the easy part, and then it's going to start getting more complicated. Uh, yeah, I'm already at height now. So basically, I'm just climbing up a ridiculously long pole with bits of wood nailed quite securely on the uh, on the edges. Um, they're, re they're quite difficult to... Oh no, it's not too bad. I think the key is just not to look down, but the wobbling has started. So I'm up this pole, and already it's pretty wobbly. No, I'm um, giving you a little bit of slack in the system here because... So well, uh, I think, I think I've think i done the easy part now, because 
well because it's going to get harder so now i'm at the top of the pole and then above the pole is like a a platform that's sticking over so i can't just climb onto it i've got to climb out and expose myself to the ground which is quite far down okay so i'm gonna so i've got to climb on top of this you platform do. now yeah. so now that's that's the that's one of the, the, the big so what we call in climbing it's called the crux so, so, so this basically is the that's challenge. the hard part where you've literally, you've literally got to sort of try and do something now. You've got to okay. manoeuvre your body outwards, so, yeah, still so holding onto the platform, but bear in mind you are completely safe. Same outcome. All right. So my hands are now off the pole and they're holding onto the platform above my head, but I've got to now lean out and there's almost nothing to grip. So I'm leaning out across and then this is really wobbling now so i'm now <laughs> sort of sat i'm on top of the platform now on my knees um i must be how high am i what uh you're about 40 foot 40 feet yep it's a very long 40 feet it's quite a long 40 feet yeah i feels... um i adjusted the wobbleometer this morning because i knew you were coming you yeah, see it's so it's slightly more wobbly um, but the weather's good oh my word this is so I'm just sat on my knees here. Did you want to have a chat? Yeah, uh, but I want to have a chat with you when you stood up. Uh, I've got to stand up? Yeah, just to, just to add to it. In fact, if you want to stay there, we'll have a chat and then I'll get you to stand up, compose yourself and we'll jump off. You happy with that, yeah? I'm happy. Okay, yes, okay. That, that's good. Yes, brilliant. I can definitely see the value in the, the stretch <laughs> elements. So the question I'll ask you, if you get nice and comfortable just up there, is okay, so what, I'm just why, sit what, on this platform. What are you experiencing right now? Your, your emotional sort of state, and where are you now physiologically? So, well, I feel a bit more comfortable now I'm sat on the platform. When I was climbing up, that was okay. Looking down was not. Climbing onto the platform at the top of the vertical pole was quite difficult. Um, but, uh, but now I feel a little bit more stable, but obviously I know what's coming and that is now starting to overpower right. my emotion. So what do you think you need to do in order to uh, overcome that and achieve what your, your objective? So I'm reassuring myself that there is no, there is no real danger. Right. There is no danger. The danger is in my mind. So okay. I need to think about how to So, so breaking that down even further, why? why? Why are you saying that? What, what's giving you that, that comfort that there is no danger? Well, I'm, I'm secured by the rope. Right. Even though, although it's not pulling me or anything, I know it's yeah. there. So if I were to just fall, I would be okay. So who've you got to place your trust in? Say again. Who've you got to place your trust in? You need to. I, well, you. You're, well, I, I'm. I'm trusting the rope, but really, you're holding it. Yeah. So I've got to make sure, assume that you. You're good to go and okay, looking so after that, me. So that's your foundation then. So you now feel that you've got that foundation of trust, where you're going. I'm okay. The final part is trusting who? Trusting myself. There you go. All right, so you've got to trust yourself and look up at that trapeze. You've got to visualize what you're going to achieve. And then once you're happy, stand up and then jump for it. Now, bearing in mind, it's the same outcome. So the success point isn't really getting that trapeze. The success point is actually going through and actually taking part in this. That trapeze looks a long way from here. <laughs> it's not, I can promise you. Now again, that, what's happening is that's internally you're, internal, you're, you're internalizing that and you're, you're, you're making it seem further away. So what you've now got to do is almost reframe that and think it's actually quite close. So it's all, it's all about positive reframing. So I need to stand up now and face that trapeze. Yep. yep. Right. So once you're happy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tighten it a little bit, but not too much because it's obviously, as you can see, oh. it's... Um, it's directly underneath. Oh my God. The rope is dialing is... under. I'm going to give you a little bit more slack so you feel comfortable. So take it in stages. Yeah. Nice and steady. Once you've composed yourself, because you need to spring off uh, shortly, so you need to compose yourself. Be aware that as you stand up, your centre of gravity has gone higher. And you're going to feel slightly, slightly wobbly. So make see, sure you've got. The, see, the instinct is to hold the cable. It's yeah. The wobble is the problem. It is. The wobble is the problem. Yep, definitely. I can feel the pull, so I'm, I'm right. literally standing on the edge now of the platform. Good. The key thing now is just to compose yourself. So slight flex in the knees, because you're going you're gonna to spring and you're going to jump forward. And the key thing is to visualise that bar and jump for it. OK, give me a sec. So I'm really having to, to jump up, myself. Up and across. Yeah, OK, give me a moment. OK. So what I'm doing now, I'm just looking at the 
uh, the pole, the, the, the trapeze ahead of me. I'm not looking down, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just looking ahead. It's still very difficult. It almost feels out of focus. One minute I think I can make it, the next second I think there's no way I'm gonna reach it. I'm gonna have to stick my arms out, and that's the other thing, because I wanna protect myself, but I'm gonna to have to jump. So if I jump now, you're gonna be ready for 100%. me. 100%. 100%. Visualise, visualise that trapeze. Okay. Arms out, stretch. The more I think about it, the worse it becomes. I've got to overcome this. I've got to think about just doing, just do it, for God's sake. Just do it, just go. Just go. Okay, all right, here I go. You ready for me? Ready for you. Yes! 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 Brilliant. Oh my word! How are you feeling? Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> I absolutely did it! I'm going to do a pull up! I'm going to do a pull up! <laughs> hey, you're check just me showing out. off now! Oh my <laughs> word! That's fantastic. So when you're happy and when you're ready, let go and I've got you on the rope. Okay. Okay, you can do I'm a countdown. Let go. Three, two, one, letting go now. Good man. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Happy? Oh yeah, totally happy. Brilliant. So I'm just swinging now, you've got me, I trust you. How are you feeling? Amazing. Your thoughts? The, oh, the adrenaline is so pumping. Oh my, I just, oh there's so much going through my head because one minute I thought, no, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. The next minute it's like, don't be stupid, of course you can do it, it's yeah. just there. Yeah. And then it's like every, every emotion in between, it's like, 100%. oh and it's my god, natural, and then, isn't it? and the natural. elation when yeah. you actually focus and capture and, and grab onto the yeah. the trapeze, and there's like relief, obviously, and it's like, I can't believe I just did that. Yeah, and that, in a nutshell, perfectly described by yourself, is why we do adventurous training in the armed forces. Yeah. So we have a, um, we can prepare somebody uh, physically for going out on ops. Uh, by obviously giving them a, 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 a you know a, a build-up training and program for going out, we can prepare them sort of as far as their uh, physiological conditions are concerned yeah. with heat climatization training. Yeah. Uh, we can prepare them medically, give them all the medical and the dental, uh, but we can't prepare them mentally. No. There's nothing to prepare somebody mentally for going out on ops and being put in an arduous situation and having to deal with something when everything just goes south immediately. The only way we can do that is through adventurous training because what you've just experienced there is you've developed coping mechanisms for dealing with stress. And it's a cross-transferable skill. So whatever you're doing now, you'll immediately be able to go and, and look back to this moment. This is for everybody, you are putting yourself in what you perceived as a, as a dangerous situation. It's not, because that's my role, that's my job, is to, is to make sure that it's not. But in your head, you're going, what are you doing, what are you doing, this is crazy, I don't like this. And what you have to do is the amount of courage uh, and, and resilience it takes for you to go, no, I'm gonna achieve this, is all down to you placing your trust in yourself and your in your in your team and your equipment and that is a cross transferable skill so your comfort zone expands so you're more of a rounded individual so you're able to roll with the punches so when we're taking you out on, on ops and something happens hopefully fingers crossed you're gonna you're gonna bypass that fight and flight syndrome and you're basically just gonna uh, take you know sort of confidence in your training and that's gonna kick in yeah. and that's why we do adventures training Perhaps a podcast is not the best format to show what I just experienced, but notwithstanding the great learning outcomes and my newly developed coping mechanisms, I was still very curious as to how RAF Coningsby was going to promote this new strategy. So I was delighted to be invited back to Squadron Leader Lee's office for a coffee and a gentle sit down. From an Air Force perspective, we are evolving the RAF fitness strategy, and that is going to take time to do, but the concepts are there and the key tenants are move, eat, think and sleep, which we've spoken about already. But at Collings Bay, what we're already doing is delivering that. We've upskilled the PTIs so they are capable and competent in doing that. We tried to deliver it in at base level across the station. So back in May, we had one big day, which was a health and wellbeing, upskilling, human performance, fresh as fair. Everyone was involved. We had educational briefs at the start. So we had a sports psychologist, a sleep specialist, as well as people from the um, RAF Benevolent Fund who briefed the execs of the station. 
that then provides the knowledge for people to understand what, what we're actually trying to achieve. We want to approach the whole station, not just the pointy edge and the front line and the operational side. Noting we want to give it as a base a foundation across the, across the station, but also to be able to live, deliver a more bespoke package if somebody might need that. So one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with the station training officer or with the PTIs who have got the softer skills from a force development, um, the right nutritional specialist to be able to make sure that we can get that person back to frontline operational effectiveness, whether that's a pilot or an engineer or a supplier or an empty driver. Because I guess, because people are different and people, even people that love fitness do different fitness. Some cycle, some run, um, some uh, work out in the gym, some do circuits, some do hit, um, some do long walks, some do gardening. So, but they're all trying to achieve ultimately the same thing, aren't they? They're all trying to be, to be fit. And I think it's maybe trying to be healthy versus trying to be fit. There are people who are more inclined to do fitness. And yes, we can continue to encourage those. But it's maybe the not quite so keen people on fitness that we need to maybe target or the sedentary people that we maybe need to target. It's really interesting how we're chatting and even and I'm and I'm really enjoying all this this new this new strategy and it's exciting um, but what I find interesting is that I'm still talking about fitness and you're talking about health and I think that kind of exposes perhaps some of the predispositions of of the service member like like myself that you know oh it's just about running around and actually it's not is it you, you a few times I've said fitness and you've said well it's about health it's about eating well it's about um, sleeping well and, and thinking better and stuff and it's far more holistic now isn't it than it was before much more holistic and actually we can influence training across the Air Force so it's creating coaches versus instructors you shouldn't be told what to do but you should be allowed the freedom to test and adjust what it is that you're doing in a safe environment so you are able to make the right decisions and come to the right answer yourself. So that's that's RAF Collingsby um, leading the way but also um, there's some exciting things happening in the future um, here at RAF Collingsby I believe and also um, from an RAF perspective so what, what's going on there in terms of the RAF either the RAF strategy or, or what's the next step? So the next step for Coningsby is that we are hosting a human performance symposium in October which is um, invites across the station as well as across defence and across industry, making sure we've got the right people in the room in order to shape how we do move forward with human performance as the training specialisation. And the key thing being, we need to be able to fly and fight. There's always been the agile, adaptable and capable, but we now need to use innovation and continue to evolve to make sure that we can still train and deliver the future RAF. And I suppose the final thing in terms of us, us chatting is that Notwithstanding the operational requirement to, to be healthy, to eat well, to, to train well, to sleep well, and to think, uh, think well, um, it actually feels quite good to be fit. It actually feels quite nice. Your general well-being is not just a, a, you know, a latest word that we use in the 21st century. It actually means something in terms of just feeling fit and healthy and stuff. Yeah, it does, it does mean something. And from a sports science background, it's even the simple fact that the endorphins that get released when you exercise, that in itself can make you feel better. And fitness can be a way to improve your mental health. And if people understand that, that is a better way to encourage people to do it. Rather than making them do fizz, you want to encourage them and make them understand why it's beneficial for them. Just make it part of your life. Exactly. Uh, just, just make it the routine. Um, just, just do it because it's good, it feels good. Train with some friends, train with the section, train in the morning, find a routine that works for you. And, and if you don't know what to do, there is always a PTI in the gym, wherever you are, who wants to help you do more. They are there to help you and they've got the skill set in order to do that. Chatting with RAF Coningsby's training team today has really opened my eyes as to where the RAF wants to go in terms of fitness, health and our well-being. Thinking simply with the acronym METS, move, eat, think and sleep, is already ingrained into my psyche. I've learned that it's not just about thrashing our bodies every lunchtime circuit or not being allowed to enjoy a tasty treat. The RAF is promoting a holistic approach to our state of mind and body. And yes, of course, it is so that we can deliver the operational output that we need but the payoffs extend well beyond our jobs. It's a starting point for anyone to gently but progressively evaluate their lifestyle, to make that small improvement and then another, 
and another, all with RAF professionals guiding, mentoring and supporting us from the highest echelons of command to our daily work colleagues and friends. For the RAF, it's live well, train well, fight well, but above all, be well. With reheat for Inside Air, I'm AS1 Victoria Andrews. Two ORIF A400M Atlas have transported UK search and rescue teams to Morocco following the 6.8 magnitude earthquake. The teams include 60 search and rescue specialists, a medical assessment team, four search dogs and rescue equipment. The A400M Atlas has the ability to carry 37 tonnes over 2,000 miles, which has enabled it to transport the teams to Marrakesh without refuelling. An RAF Poseidon, crewed by 120 Squadron, has been conducting torpedo training in the Murray Firth. The aircraft dropped an inert torpedo into the sea as part of an exercise to train the crews in anti-submarine warfare. Crews regularly practice dropping torpedoes in the simulator. However, live training such as this gives air crew and ground crew the opportunity to hone their skills and demonstrate the correct procedures in real life. The recoverable exercise torpedo, or Rextorp, was then recovered by weapons specialists on board a maritime support vessel and returned to ORAF Lossiemouth. Typhoon pilots from ORAF Coningsby have been conducting low-level flying training in the Jordanian desert at a speed of 400 miles an hour and at a level of only 500 feet from the ground. Low-level flying skills are required for tasks such as evading adversary aircraft and air defence systems. Flying in a mountainous desert region presents additional navigational and environmental challenges. Cooperation, such as this training through defence activity, is key to maintaining stability and security in the Middle East, while at the same time reinforcing the long-standing and important partnership between the UK and Jordan. And personnel from ORIF Waddington based 54 Squadron are undertaking the first instructor operation course on protector simulators at the General Atomics Aeronautical Systems Flight Test and Training Centre in North Dakota. This will see them become the ORIF's first qualified protector instructors. The crew, made up of a pilot, sensor operator and mission intelligence coordinator, have been testing various simulated scenarios under the tuition of instructors. The UK is investing in 16 Protector or G Mark I for the RAF, with the Lincolnshire base becoming home to the force, the site of launch and recovery to support domestic training and command and control for overseas operations. That's Reheat on Inside Air. Thanks Vic. And now it's time to find out who's under the hat this week with AS1 Ben Russell. I'm AS1 Ben Russell and this is Under the Hat, where we get to know an aviator in less than a minute. Name you're known by. Hi, I'm Prem Lama and people know me just by my first name, Prem. What's your profession? Logistics chef in the Royal Air Force. What's the best thing about your job? Diverse culinary opportunities. As an RF chef, we get the chance to prepare meals for a wide range of people, from our fellow service personnel to high-ranking officers, and sometimes even visiting dignitaries, which could include the members of the parliament or members of the royal family. This basically allows us to showcase our skills across the board. Hardest part of your job? Maintaining quality and consistency throughout. Whether we are feeding a small group of people or a large number of people, the output has to be the same always. Best location you've served? RF Agritary because I like sun and it's always sunny in Cyprus. What bit of luxury kit do you never deploy without? My portable charger to keep my phone battery going strong and my hard drive which has got all the new movies and new series to keep me going throughout the deployment. And what's your proudest moment in the RAF? Being notified about my MBE award in this year's King's Birthdays Honours List. Thanks Corporal Lama for helping us cook up another instalment of Under the Hat. That's all for this episode of Inside Air. Please give us a review. That really does help us in the rankings. Subscribe on your favourite podcast app and join us again soon. You've been listening to Inside Air, a behind-the-wire view of the Royal Air Force, its people, technology and operations. If you're serving in the RAF and have a story for us, please speak to your unit media and communications officer. Inside Air is written and produced for the Royal Air Force by RAF Media Reserves.